Welcome to the latest Golf Away Tours webcast. And uh, well, guys, we did it. Uh, we've made it through 2020. Um, <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, hopefully 2021 uh, has a lot more uh, positivity to it than last year. It was a struggle last year for a lot of people. Obviously for us in, in, our, uh, in our industry, it was a bit of a struggle. Um, and uh, we're going to touch on that. We're going to touch a little bit on uh, what 2020 was and what we're looking forward to more importantly in 2021 and beyond. And with that, I'm going to uh, bring on board um, the rest of our team here, Ron Judge and Matt Palermo. Guys, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So uh, we're going to touch, like I said, a little bit on 2020, but we're going to mostly try to look forward um, because uh, people want to know uh, where things stand with travel. Obviously, there's a lot of things up in the air. Um, but uh, what we know from what we've dealt with in the last number of months uh, to uh, sort of looking forward with the news of some vaccines coming out um, and, uh, and sort of a bit, a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. And with that, people are really anxious to travel and that's great. So we want to touch a little bit on, on what things look like going forward. So first of all, I want to touch a little bit on last year, what we learned uh, in our industry uh, from the struggles that we had to go through uh, due to the pandemic. And um, I guess personally, uh, I want to go over sort of for each of us personally what it was, but also from a business standpoint. And so for me, um, you know, personally, it was it was it was great to spend more time with my son, um, two two and a half year old son, who's uh, uh, you know we've spent so much time together. So that's been you know the silver lining and, and great for me because our business hasn't been nearly as busy, and a little bit more time to play golf. And that was the same with a lot of people across uh, the country and around the world that. Golf numbers were up in 2020. Uh, it was great for the game. I keep telling people that, you know, for years, Golf Canada, uh, the USGA, RNA have been uh, looking for ways to grow the game. And, uh, you know, all it took was a pandemic. And now, uh, you know, we have people playing record numbers of golf around the world. And so that was obviously uh, a positive in the golf world. And hopefully that carries forward and, and reflects uh, on, on uh, imp increased numbers moving forward uh, in future years for golfers and, and it's good for the game. So, uh, and then from a business standpoint, you know, obviously we went into this and, and in March uh, this all hit and we didn't know what to expect and um, how people were going to react both from the client standpoint, as well as our suppliers. And uh, the, the, the great thing for me uh, through all this was the relationships uh, that we further developed with our suppliers in terms of dealing dealing with them and the challenges we both had to go through and trying to look after the needs of our clients um, while dealing with our suppliers. And I think the suppliers, uh, both golf courses and, and, uh, and hotels and, and everybody we deal with overseas in particular, were very flexible and, and, and worked with us in order for us to, to help out our clients and give them options to move trips forward generally um, and still have that, uh, have that on the books. So that was, that was a real positive uh, for me. I think we all kind of work together as an industry to really, to really get through this. So um, uh, with that in mind, I'm going to pass it over to you guys, Matt, start with you. Um, what were your reflections on 2020? Yeah. Um, so personally, uh, right as that first lockdown was going, going down in March, I was also moving into a brand new place. Um, so it was great in the sense that I was home all the time. So we got all the little things that we wanted out of the way. Um, bad in the sense that when you spend every second of the day in your brand new house, you find everything that was wrong with it pretty quick. Um, but it's been pretty good. And then business wise, um, because right away it was pretty busy with kind of postponing everything and, and moving things around. But, uh, but then as we kind of went along, we had some more time to start working on things like this, starting the webcast, putting that stuff together, um, starting to look at what we can overhaul um, in terms of, website and stuff like that which we're starting to get into in the new year and then um ron's big project which he might talk about um the newsletter that we've really dived into this year um so it was nice to kind of outside of doing the typical stuff that we do with the booking the trips we could we had a little bit more time to spend to look at the marketing and, and new things we might have thought about in the past but never really had time for yeah, and uh, you always get into those, uh, you know, when you're in the busy times, you always put things aside and, and you have a rainy day list. And so it's been nice to get to the rainy day list for sure. And uh, um, with that in mind, Ron, uh, your reflections on 2020. Uh, don't go last in a webcast because you don't, everything's been said before you. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the opportunity to play a little more golf this year. Um, um, 
my wife and I had the opportunity to do a little bit of local um, staycationing, if you will, um, which was really fun and nice and get some work done around the house. So from a personal level, it was a very relaxing summer, um, to say the least. Um, and uh, I guess from a business perspective, everything you guys mentioned, and then with a, just a slightly different slant, um, given that I'm relatively new in the business, it was a reinforcement to me about just how, um, how, how great an industry it is from the perspective of really focusing on what the clients want and trying to really figure out the best way to service them, um, both our commitment to it as well as seeing the suppliers. So it was a reinforcement that uh, I guess I probably did make a bit of a right decision and I have enjoyed the opportunity to do some of the projects that Matt was talking about as well. Um, you know, our newsletter and marketing and all the different things we're trying to do. So it's been, it's been fun. I know more technology stuff than I ever did before. It's fun. Yeah. That's what happens when you get into a, uh, you know, a small business, right? You learn all those things and it's been great yeah. having you on board for sure. <clears throat> um, so now looking forward, um, which is what we want to do. And 2021 has some, like we said, light at the end of the tunnel. Um, people have, we have a number of groups booked for this year. A lot of them rolled over from 2020 uh, and others who have booked uh, for this coming year to go places all over the world, uh, in the UK and Ireland, as we uh, really like to concentrate on, um, but also uh, some other destinations around the world. And people are asking us now, and we don't know, when, when can we travel? When are we going to be comfortable traveling? Um, you know, we have groups starting in the spring and, and already a couple of them are, are starting to move their trips uh, to the following year to 2022. Um, so if you were to, you know, if we were to look at in, in a crystal ball and if, wish we had one, um, you know, personally, I think that, you know, given uh, the landscape and the, and the vaccines that are now being approved, the, the latest one just recently um, approved in the, US, in the UK. Um, so now we're starting to see a little bit more of a rollout. Hopefully things start to move a little bit quicker in, in Canada so we can get uh, vaccinated ourselves and, and feel more comfortable. But I'm thinking in my mind, it's, it's sort of midsummer. I think midsummer is when people are going to be comfortable traveling. And um, perhaps I'm being, I'm being optimistic with that. Um, I think some people will be comfortable in, this, in the spring. Other people might not be comfortable until the fall uh, or maybe even 2022. But uh, what are your thoughts? Ron, we'll start with you. <laughs> so I don't have to go last this time. That's right. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's, it's interesting because it, it's all, it's going to be such a personal decision. Um, it'll never be, and never was 100% safe. Um, there was always something that could happen and it's going to be a, up to everybody in terms of their personal decision-making. And I, and when they become comfortable with, um, with the likelihood or the risks of, of, of the, of the virus. And, and I, I agree. I think that there are people that are starting, we are starting to get inquiries about, about March, um, people looking to travel, looking to get, get, get going again, because there's the pent up demand. So there's the early adopters, if you want to call them that, then it's going to gradually start to build. And, and the opportunity will, I, I think, I think it's going to build into a, into a pretty massive groundswell because there is a pent up demand. And by the summertime, I think we're going to see a lot of people traveling and those airports kind of full again, as people start to make their way out. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a busy year, busy back half of the year, I bet. For sure, Matt. Yeah, that's kind of where I was leaning is that kind of midsummer um, time once you get a good portion of, well, hopefully the population that are looking to get vaccinated, vaccinated, which just means that those people can travel or if you're not in that boat, um, maybe that means you can, but you're masked up still. And if you're comfortable with that, great. Um, so hopefully that's that's kind of where my mindset was that sort of into late June, early July sort of thing. Um, maybe that's me being optimistic on a personal level because I'm supposed to, finally, I had a trip to play the old course last year and that's been moved to this year. So hopefully I'm just, maybe I'm just being optimistic on a, on a selfish level, I guess. But um, that's kind of where it feels like everything's kind of going. So um, fingers crossed, obviously for that. And then it would make like Ron said, a pretty busy back half of our sort of travel season. Absolutely. And, and that's what it's looking like. We obviously, uh, you know, have a lot of, of groups in the second half of the year and uh, um, hopefully they'll be traveling, but into moving then into 2022. And that's a good segue into our next segment here is, you know, people are really start really wanting to travel. That's what, that's the message we're getting from our clients is, you know, I haven't been able to travel this year. I might not be able to travel this year. I'm desperate to have a, a golf trip with, you know, with my buddies or with my family or with, uh, with my partner. 
Um, so we're looking forward to whenever we can travel. When is that? If it's the end of 21, into 2022. So with that in mind, and what we've uh, learned from our suppliers in terms of the, the bookings and, and moving everything around, um, you know, 2022 is looking like a very busy year. So um, what's our message to people wanting to book a trip, uh, you know, say overseas in 2022, Matt? Uh, the message would be start looking sooner rather than later. Um, I mean, our, our message on that has always been, it. you can't be too early. You can be early in too early in the sense that maybe we won't have a concrete time because they don't have their books open for a year and a half, two years in advance, but we can get things in place and request them so that when they do open, you're kind of first in line to get your tea time sort of thing. Um, and because the way things are sort of, especially in the UK and Ireland, some of the top courses will open their books a little bit earlier than the smaller um, courses. So, um, and, and with the way things were this year, it was a lot different than previous years. So maybe this coming year in 21 opening for 22, it'll be even more different. So, um, I mean, the message from, from us has always kind of been sooner rather than later is better. Yeah, absolutely. You can never, you can never look at it too early, as you said. And, um, you know, people are going to be moving their trips from 21 to 22. We know that whether it's just the people from the spring, uh, whether they are even moving them to the fall, which is, which is a possibility. Um, however, people moving from, from the spring of 21 to the fall of 21 is difficult because a lot of the fall times are, are booked up, particularly at the, at the big, uh, the big name courses. So as a result, they're moving it into 22. Um, typically courses don't open their sheets for the following year until at least the spring and a lot of them later in the summer and fall. But this year we expect uh, places to open up a little bit earlier to accommodate the trips moving from 21 to 22 and the new requests that people are really desperate to get in uh, and get their tea times locked up uh, for 22. So, um, you know, like you said, earlier the better and hopefully people start looking into that in the, uh, in, over the winter and into the spring. And I mean, like it's a, it's an idea, it's an ideal opportunity in a sense, sorry for interrupting because we're all looking for things to do. Well, it's a great opportunity to bring your buddies or your, or your couple of friends together to start to chat about where you'd like to go. Um, just from a personal perspective, I have, um, I have just about finished putting our request together to send for next year or for 2022, sorry, for my group of eight. And I'm just going to have it ready. It'll go in to suppliers to get to get my group into the queue because I have a group of eight that wants to go to Northern Ireland and we want to make sure our stuff is in line and there's nothing to stop us from putting it in now. Um, and it's a great excuse to have a few drinks over the Zoom or whatever um, and plan out your trip while you got some time and make sure you're at the front of the queue for that trip that you really know you want to take. Why not have it in place? Absolutely. So yeah, like you said, even though the tea sheets aren't open, we can get the requests in at least uh, at least be the front of the line and um, and hey, it's something to look forward to, right? Which people need nowadays. Yep. So, um, so that's really with the international travel. We've had to focus a little bit more on domestic travel, as most people have around the world. Uh, domestic travel has uh, has increased um, to some extent. Um, or the focus at least because people can't go internationally. So for us, you know, people wanting to travel around Canada, we're getting a lot more requests. Obviously the East coast for us has always been popular with Cabot um, and PEI and Highlands links and uh, some great places out there to visit, but with their bubble, it was tough to get out there in 2020. Um, so, you know, obviously there are other places to, to look at around the country and we've really been focusing on, on, on that a little bit more. Uh, Ron, you've been focusing on it uh, a lot in our newsletters. So, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, we've already focused on the destinations, but for you guys, where would you want to go? Where, where is that? And, and we talked a little bit about it before we started recording this. Um, but Ron, where would you want to go if you were to go uh, on a domestic trip in 2021? So in a shameless plug for the newsletter, take a look at it, but I've already kind of identified it in there in the, in, in the newsletter that the place I haven't been to in Canada that I'm very much looking forward to getting to is Whistler. Um, I've had the privilege and opportunity to golf in a lot of amazing places throughout Alberta and BC and out in the East Coast and Quebec. Um, but I haven't had a chance to get to Whistler yet. And with the combination of the courses they have there um, and the village, um, which I have been to for skiing in the past, um, I can hardly wait to get out there um, and, and, and play Big Sky. Uh, Nicholas North and all the great courses that they have there. It's, I love Western golf. Uh, mountain golf, I think is tremendously underrated in this country. People forget what we have 
as, as an Ontario um, person, we kind of forget every once in a while the great golf that we have out there. Yeah, Cabot's amazing. Um, it's unbelievable, actually. But it's almost completely booked for next year. Um, wow, is the West ever good? It is amazing golf, and I love hitting 250 yard five irons. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Matt, how about yourself? Yeah, so I actually, um, one of the few paces, places I've been uh, lucky enough to travel in Canada was I went to Banff years and years ago. I had a buddy that was working there for the summer, so I went out for um, a week. And I'd actually, for me, it would be going back and mixing it with Jasper because I haven't done Jasper yet. Um, that's a place I really want to get out to. And then um, for me, it would be doing Banff properly. Um, because I was young, I was sleeping on a couch for a week and playing uh, as the final tee time every day and not finishing all 18, um, pulling pins with all the ground screw guys. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but I love to actually go and do it up a little bit more um, and play, play the golf course sort of in prime time um, and get all 18 holes in every, every time I played it. So that's kind of a place that I have been, but I, I want to go back and kind of do it properly sort of thing. Yeah. And for me, you know, and we're focusing on the West Coast, obviously <clears throat> the East Coast is where we do a lot of our business. And uh, I've had the, the pleasure of going to, to Cabot and Island Links and, and absolutely love them. And I'll get back there sooner than later. Uh, it's certainly high on, on my on my list of places to, to visit in Canada. But for me, if I were to, to, to go somewhere uh, that to still tick off an area in Canada, it would be Vancouver Island, um, getting out to Victoria. Um, you know, we've been getting a lot of requests for places like Bear Mountain and, and, uh, and so on out near Victoria. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'd like to get out and see it. That's one place that I haven't seen in Canada. I've played, been lucky enough to play a lot of golf across the country, um, but not out there. So uh, that's high on my list. And hopefully uh, I'll be able to take it off in at some point in 2021. And, you know, we, we're even sending people out there, uh, you know, in the winter, right? Um, it, it's a yeah, winter March. golf destination in Canada. It's really yeah. the only one. Not that the weather's great, but you're going to get at least golf weather. You know, temperatures in the high single digits, perhaps, and 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 maybe a little bit of rain, but at least it's 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 golf weather in our country. So um, that's uh, certainly an option for people if they want to sneak away uh, this winter. Um, this is a great review, guys, and uh, love looking forward to uh, some more positive times in 2021. Um, you know, looking forward to getting back in the office with you guys for one thing. Um, on a more regular basis uh, you know we've been going a little bit over the last little while but working mostly from home and uh, it's always nice to get in the office and talk uh, you know amongst each other about all these great destinations that we get to deal with on a regular basis and then talking to our suppliers on a more regular basis and, and finally getting to visit um, some great places so 2021 uh, uh, should be um, you know a year uh, that turns around a little bit for our industry and we're really looking forward to that so guys, um, all the best, happy new year. And, um, let's, uh, let's all look forward to some better times ahead. Absolutely. Goodbye 2020. Yes.